All right, guys, I am not claiming that this is going to be the most professional video that you've ever watched on YouTube, but it is second best to me standing in front of you in the class and going through your PET task. So I've already mentioned that I've um, that I will send you another video link that Mr. Finamava is going to do, as well as I've posted already a video that I found on YouTube of another um, cat teacher in some, somewhere in South Africa that um, took these learners through the pet. But perhaps it is more familiar to you if you hear my voice. So the pet task is a task, just to summarize, that counts 25% of your year mark. So it is of vital, utmost importance that you um, do this to the best of your ability and ability and it's it's actually fairly simple it's not going to take you a lot of time it's grade 10 a lot of the things are actually given to you and we'll I'll show you where to find um, the questions etc that you are needing so um, we're going to skip well skip through the table of contents so the pet you can read this this is um, straightforward what you um, will um, have to hand in in the end is a word processing document with a short description of the problem and the task, focus question instead of high quality questions. So the focus question is actually given to you and a lot of these questions are also given and I will somewhere on the group ask um, you guys to make suggestions of more questions and then we have a pool of questions that everyone can choose from. And then um, a list of appropriate information sources that is also given, information um, which has been sifted, evaluated, and summarized. This has to be done by you. A questionnaire, there's also an example attached to this document, and a spreadsheet. This is now for phase two, um, which reflects management and processing of um, data and information. And then you have to write a report um, of your um, research. Two phases. Phase one, find and access data and information. Um, it's a word processing document and then we have in um, phase two a spreadsheet and a final report. So the, it's done in two phases um, and you have to complete um, the PET. We will give you due dates. The phase one is due on the 30th of April, which is next week. And here's the topic. Um, very interestingly, um, I looked at some of your answers in the quiz and very few of you actually say digital footprint. So um, there we go. The topic, digital footprint. Everyone who uses the internet has a digital footprint. It is wise to consider what trail of data you are leaving behind. So the things that you post on Facebook, on Instagram, things that you um, sent um, on WhatsApp groups like our cat group, all that actually stays there and um, is a digital footprint, like a trail that you leave. So the focus question um, for this task is that you um, answer the question, how does your digital footprint impact your life? So it can possibly impact you negatively or positively. Then um, we have to do in the task, investigate how our digital footprint can have an impact in our lives, including examples, activities, and tools for managing our digital footprint. Um, I apologize for all these um, notification sounds, but yes, that is what's up. And some of you, it's some messages that actually you are sending me while I'm doing this um, video. So, um, ask research questions that will assist you. So, here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine questions already. Suggestive, what a difficult word. Suggested questions. Um, you have to use a minimum of 10, and there's already nine that are suggested to you. And we will build up this question pool a little bit more in class. Okay, then you have to gather and analyze 
data relevant to the investigation, identify suitable audience. So to whom are you addressing this task? Is it fellow peers? Is it your is it adults? Is it a teacher? Is it a community? So you have to make sure that um, the, the information that you gather is suitable for the audience that you've chosen. Okay, so you can, this is now the big topic. So you can consider some of the following areas. A description of a digital fo um, footprint. Um, a description of two types of digital footprints. A description of the online activities leading to a digital footprint. The reason why they give this, and I'm not going to read all of them, you can read them yourself, is that you have to create headings that guide your um, research or guide your report to a specific point in answering this question. So whatever you ask, whatever question you ask needs to answer the focus question. So when you think of a new question, look back at your focus question and see, okay, does this um, answer that question? Is it leading me to answer that question? Okay, um, so possible ideas that you could use for uh, recommendation solutions and conclusions in your reports, um, and you can read this as well. And then they give you a list of possible resources you may uh, wish to consult, so you can, you can just press control and um, follow the link, um, and it will take you to a site that actually talks about digital footprint. And then you will have to later on complete tables with the resource information and provide a summary in your own words about what you have researched. Okay, what you need to complete it, um, Pat, is a word processing software and spreadsheet software. If you do not have either of them and during lockdown difficult to get to a computer that um, you can use, please write out and plan out the entire pack of the phase one still in this week and I would like you to submit that to me as well. Okay, you need internet access to find information. If you cannot find that, then um, you will have to leave that part out, but communicate to me clearly what you can and what you cannot do. But if you can watch this video, you have internet access, which means if you tell me you can't, then you are lying. But I'm not going to say that so loud. Okay, access to other sources such as printed media, magazines, and so on, and they can be electronic as well, ebooks, e-articles, and so on. So, although that is um, an electronic source and you have to use the internet to get to it, it is still considered as a different type of source, um, so you can use of that. You will need Two different types of sources, of which two needs to be websites, and then you can use one other one. And then you obviously have a um, questionnaire that you're going to send out, create and send out as well. And um, yeah, I would strongly recommend that you use Google Forms to create your questionnaire. Um, I can make an example and send it to you so that you can follow that example. All right. Um, and you need um, to have access to facilities to convert hard copies to electronic copies, to whether it's a scanner, digital camera, your smartphone, etc., so that you can um, send me evidence of your work. Okay, this is honesty. Please, guys, you may not plagiarize, which means you may not copy somebody else's um, work or send your work to somebody and they just adapt it. Um, you have to give recognition and acknowledgement to um, sources that you have used. Um, and then, yeah, submit work typed or word processed by another person. You may not do that. Okay. Um, Non-compliance means if you do not complete this task, you will get zero. Zero means that you cannot write exam, which means that you fail the subject, which means that you fail the year. Um, so that's how serious it is. <clears throat> Overview of the tasks. So phase one, this is what we're going to do this week. Create a suitable folder structure. That's easy. Um, create, you know, phase, have say a folder called pet and with your name. Um, create 10 to 2020. 
um, and then in there you have phase one and phase two in the phase one um, folder you will have your you know evidence of resources as well as a word document that's called phase one and yes okay create a worst person document form um, formulate a task definition and the template that i've sent you has actually all the headings that you need um, for for all of this okay and then there's um, declarations of authenticity we will um i will have you sign those once we're back at school or i'll find another um way in the end and then phase two we're going to jump through um over that because that's not so important so here's the instructions for phase one the purpose of the phase of the pet is to determine what the problem is and what needs to be done get 100 percent clarity what the focus of your investigation will be what data and information you will need to answer the focus question where to find the information sources whether the information gathered is relevant administer a questionnaire so here's your folder structure very easy um, to do this um, yeah so just follow this guidelines and then you get already all the marks i will open up the um, marking rubric which is also attached to this document um, please at all times go to the marking rubric and see where i'm going to um, give your marks and then just simply do it it's as easy as that okay design a cover page that's what we're going to do today um, table of contents i will show you how to do that at a later stage but um, it's easy to you go to insert no no um you go to references over here table of contents and then you can just say you know add a table of contents um create the framework which we have done for you already in the template and this is now the important this is the task definition 450 words um where you can simply answer these questions about the task with your focus question in mind and obviously the topic in mind um i don't want bullets i want one paragraph of about 150 words um, that will answer those questions you don't say why am i doing this because what will the focus be of because or this is it um, it's one paragraph where all these are incorporated in okay then we have the um, research questions that will guide so you need a minimum of 10 here's your um focus question again and then they take you through um, some guidelines of those questions okay three headings um, that you need um, and then you can allocate the questions that you have formulated underneath those three headings you can have one question for one heading and one question for another and eight for the last one how you distribute it it doesn't matter as long as they um, have at least 10 questions and three headings okay and then you have to fill out this um, table which is also part of your template um, what's the question and then a possible source is it a um, website or is it an article or is it an interview or a questionnaire so the possible source once you have done that um, you also have to summarize um, your data um, with a short summary of you know um, the what the website or the source is about with the question in mind obviously and then you write down all this bibliographical data onto i've created this table also in the template for you um, so you can just fill this in and um, do the summary of it okay then um, so you need two of these tables and one of them for the extra source okay um, the, using the summaries you made from the sources write paragraphs for um, your three main headings um, and then you have to administer the questionnaire please re read through this um, but i would suggest again um, that you create a google form um, yeah diagrams 
Um, and then you have to obviously proofread and check, you know, spelling, etc., before you hand it in. And here is a detailed list on page. We are on page. Let's quickly see eleven. Um, you have a detailed um, list of what needs to be handed in. We're going to jump over um, phase two. Okay. And then we have over here the marking rubric. So please read through this. There's 40 marks allocated for um, phase one. So please look at this. Um, there's an Excel spreadsheet as well. Let me quickly see if I've um, got that open. No, I do not have this open. Um, let me just see if I can actually, um, I have it so, no. I don't have it at hand right now, but it is actually the spreadsheet looks exactly like this. Um, it's just that um, it's electronic. All right, so please read through this. And then there's phase two assessment tool as well. And I'm just going to scroll down so that you can see. So here's an example of the questionnaire. So you can create something like this electronically. Um, or make use of something like this. But your questionnaire should have more or less the same kind of um, details. Um, here is your example style guide um, for your word processing document. Make sure that all of this is adhered to. Then Annex C, this is the different um, Pages and your example, your template um, actually um, has all these pages and sections already. Okay. And then um, here's the learner declaration as well as the final declaration of authenticity that we're going to look at. Um, all right. That concludes this video. And I hope this helped you a little bit, but you can read, you can go through. It is so clear of what is actually asked of you. And just remember, I'm also available for questions. Thank you, guys.